Hi folks, Gary Farkash, once again at the Oyster Bay Railroad Museum. This time I'm standing in front of our wooden caboose, number 12. Number 12 was one of many built by the American Car and Foundry in 1927, specifically for the Long Island Railroad. As you can see here, it was built February 27th. It's an N52 A class. This is a caboose. It is a hack. It is a crummy. This is a cabin car. Every one of those names that I just mentioned is a euphemism for caboose. This car brought up the end of every train. And it wouldn't be a real train if there wasn't a caboose at the end sporting marker lights, which I will show you later. This car, like I said, was built in 1927 by the American Car and Foundry for the Long Island Railroad, and it served the Long Island Railroad until about 1961 when it was retired, at which point it was purchased by the Shoreline Trolley Museum in Connecticut, and they had it up there using it as a bunkhouse. So they did a little bit of work on the inside to be able to get people to sleep overnight there as volunteers for, the, for their trolley museum. So let's go inside, I'll show you what's going on. And you'll see over here, every piece of equipment that we have has a description in front of it. We tell the history of the caboose. And we purchased this unit in June of 2002 and moved it up here into our yard. Casey Madden, Keith Madden, was the spearhead for getting this caboose up to us. He did fundraising and he took care of almost everything. Uh, may he rest in peace. Unfortunately, he's passed away a few years ago, but Keith Madden was a great guy and one of our favorite volunteers. So we're going to go up the staircase. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned before, it wouldn't be a real train if it weren't for marker lights. So this cast bracket here would have held the one of the lights that would have been on that side and the opposite side that you can see there. This device up here is actually a whistle that the conductor who wrote, or the brakeman who rode this car can actually con contact the engineer and the fireman up front if there was anything wrong. This car has a cupola on top, which we'll discuss later. So let's come inside. Now you'll notice over here, these two yellow lanterns. These were the these are the actual markers that would have been on the end of the caboose to denote that this was a real train. This is our stove. This is where the crew would cook their dinners, would have heat. They had a coal source over here that they would shovel into here. Over here they had a water cistern. Again, we have signs everywhere to denote what this car is. A sink, water, ice. Over here is a desk that the conductor and the brakeman would use to do their work. They had a seat here. As I mentioned, the Shoreline Trolley Museum used it as a bunkhouse, so they added extra bunks in place of just a seat. As we walk in through here, this is the cupola area. Cupola is an extended portion of the roof, and you'll see this window up here, these windows here, where they can look out for what's called hot boxes or anything along the side of the uh, train tracks in case there were any issues and then they would notify the crew up front. Again, bunk for the bunkhouse. And if you have food and water and drink and you're moving, you gotta go to the bathroom, right? Voila, we have a toilet. <clears throat> not too big, definitely not too bright, but it is definitely usable. Right out to the tracks. No holding tanks here, folks. And on this end, again, we have bunks on the top. We have bunks on the bottom with storage. And this is where people would sleep when they were at the Shoreline Trolley Museum. Now, another feature of this caboose that you'll see over here are the many cabinets. We had a lot of storage, a lot of lockers, and down here specifically, the original ice box wrapped in galvanized metal, they would stick blocks of ice inside where they can keep their food and their drinks and their vegetables. Because this was a long distance car. This went out from Brooklyn and from Queens all the way out to Riverhead or Greenport, Montauk, 
where the freights would go all year round. So this is something that was very important for them so they could eat. Um, again, come on down to the Oyster Bay Railroad Museum, see our equipment, and have fun.